Halt! The episode which you are streaming has orders from the Dalek Supreme Council. You are ordered to subscribe and exterminate the like button. Failure to do so will result in your death. Begin transmission. <laughs> Welcome, audience members. You are now entering the Parliament of the Daleks, a Doctor Who podcast focusing on the toys, action figures, and merchandise from the past, present, and future of our favorite sci-fi franchise. I'm your Dalek fanatic host, Wade, joined by figure expert Alex and Captain Kitbasher Jack in our first episode for 2022, Warriors of the Deep. This will also be a part of, quote-unquote, Season 2 of Parliament of the Daleks, why we did this, no reason, other than for fun and keeping track of our episodes. So today we'll be taking a look at Character Options 5.5 inch figures for BNM and Character Online and discussing our thoughts on the latest sets that are available to purchase as of this time. First things off, Alex, what does BNM have in store for us? Well, in BNM stores at the moment, we have the latest exclusive release which is a set based on the very first Fourth Doctor story, Robot, featuring, of course, the K-1 robot, as well as a repaint of the Fourth Doctor Hainer's original Season 12 costume. The K-1 robot has been tweaked slightly from its original Builder figure release, with a more pinkish hue to the originally red paint deco and translucent red head, as well as a grey neck and a smaller right-hand claw. The Fourth Doctor has had several changes, with a new lighter red jacket, patent tie, and speckled trouser detailing, to name a few. The set is priced £19.99 and should be in most good B&M stores now. So this set looks pretty cool, and it is uh, a little bit surprising that Character Options finally, after, what, more than a decade, decided to re-release the K1? Now, of course, for people like me, we're a little bit bummed that we've spent all of this money on parts or whatnot to build our own K1, but what's really cool about this one is the way Alduar updated it. Now, I believe, Alex, you and Jack both have this thing in hand right now. Uh, what are your overall thoughts on the latest uh, re-release and some of the updates that they provided for it? I really like it. I never owned the original Builder figure. I, I didn't even own any of the parts to it, but I I really like it. I think <clears throat> the silver's really nice, and the pink helps differentiate it enough from the original to... I sort of not annoy the collectors who spend all the money like yourself on building the original build a figure. And uh, I like the Tom Baker as well. I really like the Tom Baker. I think for me, and I don't want to upset um, Alduar here by saying this, but I'm not a massive Tom Baker fan. So I can hear him sort of loading his gun as I'm saying this sentence, but I'm not a massive Tom Baker fan. So I don't really care about owning all the different variants of his costumes. So this will probably be my definitive fourth Doctor for the shelf because it's really nice. I think normally I'm not a fan of them casting the like jacket or the trousers in just the pl plastic and not painting it. But for the jacket, I think it really works. It's got like a, a cherry red gumminess to it, like the look, and I really like it. And I think it works well for the uh, scarf, especially where it's sort of new on for this time frame. So it wouldn't be as dirty. But yeah, the, I would say the only problem I have with the K1, which is on the original, is the wobbly waist. But that can be fixed. I fixed mine with a, a twisty tie. I just tied it round and tucked it up the back under the sort of chest cavity. Yeah, that was pretty ingenious how you did that. And it works pretty good overall. Alex, what are your thoughts on this set, seeing it in hand, and especially comparing it with its older figure counterparts? Yeah, it's interesting, really, because I can really compare this figure to the original without any, dare I say, sort of biases to the amount of money being spent normally on the original. Because as you guys know from what I said in the pilot episode, I got the original K-1 robot for £15 at a Comic-Con, which oh. is insane. Nuts to think about. You still got it cheaper than B&M. <laughs> I know, exactly. So I got both of them very cheap. And, you know, both versions are great. The only, one, the only thing my original was missing was the gun, so... That was one of my main motives for buying this set, so I could finally have the uh, little disintegrator gun. Um, and yeah, I think 
what this set does so excellently with the K1 is every change that has been done makes it more screen accurate but the changes don't feel unnecessary like certain other re-releases we've had in the past. Um, so it allows the original to keep its, you know, original value and, you know, for those who, who originally built it to still feel a sense of accomplishment while we can still allow newer fans and collectors to be able to buy this one and to buy one cheaply. And yeah, I think I like the sort of purpley tint they've got going on. It's really nice. And I think for me, I, I I like the slightly shinier silver they've used on the paint because um, when you look at the actual prop, it's a very, you know, shiny, cheap silver. Um, so I feel like they've replicated that just a little bit better. And um, yeah, the interesting thing is that they've obviously had the smaller claw hand, which for me, I don't know if it was really worth it, like in terms of the cost for like a new sculpt. So at least it's a little something in terms of the sculpting department. Although, despite it being on the right hand way to hold his gun, I do think the original hand holds the gun better with this thinner one sort of holding it a bit more loosely. Yeah, and I was going to say too, um, does does it hold the gun at a weird angle, kind of like the actual prop in the show? Because, you know, all it was was just two little clasps on the side where they attached the gun. And of course, it didn't hold it properly. So it was always like, nose down or any or no even nose up sometimes it was always janky does it replicate that in any way with this new hand uh yeah it does it kind of sort of it's a bit droopy because obviously the sort of weight of the gun sort of at the front sort of brings it downwards a bit so yeah it sort of fits in with the overall floppiness of the entire look of the robot and uh, yeah speaking of floppiness the the waist piece is really loose and when i first got out of the box it was tricky to stand up but now i found a bit of a knack for it and it you know might just stand, stand up okay um, but in general, the articulation is a lot looser on this one, which I just assume is due to the manufacturing process um, rather than being built by hand. Yeah, some parts where I don't mind the looseness, like on the arms and things. But yeah, on something like the waist, it's a bit more um, concerning. Now, do you think that because it's been 12 years since Al has uh, pretty much actually is it 12 years? Am I even saying that right? Gosh. Forget 12 years, guys. This thing came out 2008. What is that? 14 years? Jeez. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Let me correct myself. So, it's been 14 years since we've seen this. Do you think that because of times changing and different plastics being used, do you feel like they used a softer kind of plastic to make this as opposed to harder plastic? How does it feel overall in hand? compared to the original i don't i mean i I'd, I'd say it feels pretty much the same actually i don't feel like the plastic is like particularly soft because it's still the more hard abs mostly especially with the torso and everything so it still feels pretty robust and pretty much the same although i'd say maybe like the um claws are a little bit softer um but that's really about it i don't think the feel is any cheaper or lighter or anything like that that's pretty good then. So overall, would you say that even though this is a re-release, this is something worthy of buying again for your collection? Absolutely, especially for the price. And really for me, um, the uh, main selling point is the fourth Doctor variant, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute. So yeah, but I think even if you're someone who owns the original K1, I still think this is actually worth the pickup for the price. Yeah, overall, I really like this set. And like I said before, even though I'm building my original, <laughs> all I need is one more part really all i need is a spare leg if anyone has a spare k1 leg be sure to shoot me a dm <laughs> but i actually really like this new re-release that they did mainly because like what you guys said it looks more accurate and it has a certain feel of authenticity and i feel like the quality really pulls through in this set i like the brighter silver and then I also really like the fact that they used a little bit more of a pink magenta color uh, for what was originally red on the first iteration. Uh, they did it for the dome on top and then for the red lining on the sides. Having it in this color looks really nice, actually. And it, in my opinion, captures the prop very well. And I think it is worthy of buying again just to have that little bit of uh, extra authenticity to it. And for all you Capaldi fans out there, you can pretty much buy this thing. And then if you read the Doctor Who comics, uh, you may know that there's a 
quote unquote K2 robot in the series. Uh, basically just the K1 robot being like revived or something like that. But you could maybe just about get away calling this thing the K2 and have it with your Capaldi collection. But anyways, that's just for fun. <laughs> so after that K1 robot, let's discuss this fourth Doctor figure. Now, in Al's original video, he mentioned that they used an entirely new head sculpt for this fourth Doctor. But what do you guys think? I think we all know the answer here, right? <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, the sculpt is definitely the version that debuted in the Eleven Doctors set on the uh, Seeds of Doom figure. It has been on multiple releases since. It is absolutely identical, uh, just painted a lot better, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, the idea that the sculpt is new is, yeah, it's not true. It is the old sculpt. But the interesting thing about it is that, as we all know, the there was a new sculpt made, as posted on the Apple Design Company Facebook page yesterday. Um, and you can see that the face design is was intended to be the uh, Terra the Zygons style face with a you know newly done hair and hat and everything that would have been on this figure. So yeah, it's pretty interesting to think what that would have been like. Miss. Now, Jack, are you happy that they used this old Seeds of Doom head, or would you have preferred them to use the new head, uh, like Al says they were going to use or did use but didn't use? We don't know if this is a factory error or if they just opted to use the Seeds of Doom or if this head was on reserve from Affable or if this is going to come in a new figure down the road. We literally have no idea. But whatever happened, there was a mess up of some kind, right? <laughs> so, Jack, what do you think of the head sculpt? I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, but I literally think the head, the mold for the head should be like cast into the sea. It is awful. <laughs> it looks like Miriam Margulies, okay? It, it literally does. It looks like an old woman wearing Tom Baker's clothes. It doesn't look right. It looks... I'm not saying I could do a better job, but I, could, I couldn't. But I'm not getting paid, and it's not my pr profession to do this, you know, sculpt work. And it looks nothing like Tom Baker. It looks like a weird, pudgy, old man version of Tom Baker. It's not good. It needs to go... I don't really care about the Tom Baker era anyway, but if I was to, you know, a gun to my head and I had to pick, I would say go with the Seeds of Doom head. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, for me, in my opinion, I think the head sculpt does look like Tom Baker, but as you say, it's, it's like a slightly older Tom Baker. He doesn't really look how he did during his tenure, which I think is the real problem. It's just a slightly too many creases and wrinkles and jowling and everything that just throw it off a little bit. And I think... With the Zygons figure release we got, I think one of the biggest issues with the way it was painted, I think the eyes are just way too big. They're actually off center as well. If you look at the sculpt on the figure, the eyes are painted, I think, a little bit lower. Um, so that really throws it off. And then obviously they're very vibrant blue. It just looks distracting. It's horrible. Um, so, and yeah, there is something about the sculpt that is off, even though it is a good likeness to Tom Baker. I think the Seeds of Doom one is so much better, and I'm really glad they used it on this K1 robot release in the end, um, because it just... For me, it's my second favorite Tom Baker head after the uh, Season 18 one. Yeah, I think I can agree with you. This head sculpt is rather interesting. We all know how the Zygons one came about, and how it was painted and everything, and while there were certain aspects where I could absolutely see the likeness in Tom Baker, it was like if you turned it a half a degree either way, there was just something that looked off. And it kind of does make Tom look a lot older than how he appeared in this season. Especially, like, if you ask me, season 13 was, like, when he was in his prime for the role. That was when he had the character down and everything. But looking at this, there are certain aspects where I think that captures Tom Baker pretty well. Namely, see, they definitely got the nose. They got a little bit of the chin, but I think the problem is just like going with the cheeks and then like under the jaw. It's like they get very round, it feels like, just making him look older than what he should. It looks like to me, you know, like those um, weird sort of CG animated movies where they'll they'll go almost realistic with their design, but still a bit cartoony at the same time. 
That's what it looks like to me. So this is video game Tom Baker. Yeah, it's got like a bit of Uncanny Valley. <laughs> it is. It really is, actually. And I'm not saying this thing's a terrible sculpt. Not by any means. I am. I could see a lot of talent put into this. I think it just needs a little bit more tweaking, and I'm not entirely sure why they continue to use this. The thing I like to sort of think about here as well is with this new head sculpt, I wonder if the actual tooling for it does exist or not if it's just the sculpt design and it never actually got made into new tooling or not because maybe they designed it and then the budget hit them and they went actually we can't use it um or it is just a cock up of the factory uh it's interesting to sort of think about that it could be either or or tinfoil hats are now removed yeah one thing i'd like to finish off with is uh i've not really talked about the paint apps on the fourth doctor that much and i i've just got to say the the they have really nailed this one. It is such an improvement on the original season twelve release. The lighter red jacket is really good. And as Jack said, I'm not usually a fan of them just casting in the plastic, but this one works absolutely fine. Um and yeah, even the lack of dirt wash on the scarf I thought was a bit of like a oh, you know, they just sort of skipped that. But you know, it is his first appearance in this outfit, so the scarf is going to be very clean. And for me, the main thing is the patterning on the tie. I just think that is yeah, that's really impressive. the main thing that the first one was missing. And it's so good to see it on this one. And they've they've done it really well. I agree. And uh, I've got to say, I really like the speckling effect on the trousers. And it's interesting to note that the speckling they've done on this is different to the Terror of the Zygons one. Well, you were able to compare both of them. And you said that the Zygon one had bigger speckles and darker ones, but it was more of a, a colder gray, whereas this new release is a bit more of a warmer gray with the tint of brown to it almost, and then like lighter speckling. How did you describe it? Yeah, I'd say the Zygons one, basically the trousers are cast in gray plastic, like it's quite cold gray. And then with that, they put very heavy black speckles on as well as some brown speckles in there as well. And I did like that effect at the time, but I do think this new one is better because what they've done is they've actually painted the trousers a base color of the sort of, it is like a warm gray, sort of light brown kind of color. And then they've just gone with a much more subtle speckling of just dark brown, which I think, you know, it's a lot more subtle and it works very nicely. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I'm glad you brought up the costume too, because... If you don't want this set for the K1 robot, you want this set for this fourth Doctor. Uh, like Jack said, this is as definitive as it gets. And I really love the Season 12 costume. Uh, I would love to be able to piece together the full outfit one of these days. In fact, I'm getting a custom scarf made for me right now. But I love the brighter red jacket. Now, even though it is really off-putting at first... Well, the promotional pictures didn't do any good. They made it really garishly bright. Yeah, the promotional photos don't do good. They never do any good. Al, you could just hire me as your photographer. I'll do this all for you for Doctor Who toys. Just keep that in mind. I I'm cheap labor. <laughs> but yeah, this new jacket, it's really cool how they did it, because when I look at it, it actually looks like that kind of almost velvety material that they used for the actual coat. It's got that weird fuzziness to it. And then the same with the pants as well, doing it in the warmer tone um, for the coloring. It makes it almost look like fabric. And I'm sure the way this thing photographs is going to look incredible in any sort of toy photography or product photography. And then, like you said, too, that tie makes all the difference in the world. I can't believe we got printing on that small of... A scale before it's it's actually really an impressive feat for paint apps because there's some hasbro figures out there that don't even go to that level of detail well most toy companies don't go to that level of detail anymore i mean take a look at mcfarlane where they don't paint anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i take you what that's the benefit of having someone who is insanely biased towards the figures they're making but then again todd mcfarlane is too and he didn't give a toss <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he loves Batman, but his Batman are barely painted. <laughs> but yeah, back to this Tom Baker, though. I, like, for me, this is probably my second favorite variant they've ever done of the fourth Doctor, with my number one still being the 13 Doctors set, season 18 one. But yeah, this one is really up there for me. So definitive, and yeah, everything about it is just perfect. 
And I'd say the set is 99.9% perfect. I think the only thing, and I don't know why Al didn't include this, when can we get some Sonic screwdrivers again? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. If this set had a Sonic with it, that is top tier stuff. You would have everything you could have ever needed as a kid. It would have been great. Or... Actually, even if you ask me, it'd be cool, too, if he did just a little mini white bag with jelly babies and then like they're all um, painted at the top of it. That would be pretty fun, too. I- I'm not saying we need that, but it it fits with the episode, right? Especially since he said that they have the digital sculpts for a bag of jelly babies and he's always wanted to have it included. Yeah, they did prototype it, but for whatever reason, they just decided not to include it in the end. I think because maybe it looked a bit vague on such a small scale. And people might not notice what it actually was. <laughs> they maybe could have done it for this set. Yeah, I really do wonder what stops them from including a Sonic. I mean, surely it doesn't cost them that much more money to make it. <laughs> it costs them 0.007834 cents of a pound. I don't know. <laughs> and that's that's the official numbers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's confirmed. That is confirmed. All right. I think that covers that set nicely. Now... This is what you can buy at B&M stores, uh, hopefully right about now. Um, unfortunately, with B&M distribution and everything, we don't know for sure. But this isn't the only thing you can buy right now. If you go on Character Online right now, uh, just Tuesday, they announced a brand new exclusive set. Alex, what did they announce? Okay, so yeah, yesterday, Character Options announced their new online exclusive set, Warriors of the Deep. This set features the three Command Silurian crew of Iktar, Tarpok, and Skibus. I'm sorry, by the way, if I've mispronounced those names, because I've not seen this story <laughs> uh, as seen in the 1984 story. The three figures are, are near identical, however, do have some minor paint variation on their third eye to represent whether their eyes are lit up or not, with one having a red eye and the remaining being black. The legs and upper arms are reused sculpts from the Sea Devil figure, However, everything else is brand new, which is really the main selling point of this set. The figures come packaged in the standard heritage style guide packaging we're familiar with, however, larger than normal and with an interior featuring a 3D card diorama insert. The set is available exclusively through Character Online, priced £29.99 and are limited to 5,000 units and are selling fast, so if you want these, get them. <laughs> Yeah, right now, this as of we're recording this video, it is Wednesday, February 16th. Um, we don't know for sure, uh, but it's acting like on the website, like they've sold more than 2,000 or even 3,000 units. So, But we're thinking they might be able to restock it, kind of like what they did for the second Doctor in TARDIS from the Abominable Snet. You might be wondering why I said uh, Warriors of the Deep in our episode's title, or basically it's a pun of Warriors of the Deep, but we'll go into why we titled it like this, because I think it's safe to say all three of us are a bit questionative about this set. Yeah, we have our worries. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we have our worries about this set, and we'll explain um, one by one. Uh, We'll start with you, Jack. Gather round. It's time for another um, reason to hate me. I cannot stand. There's no paint. There's like, it's been shown to a dry brush. It's not even been dry brush. It's just been put in the same room as someone with a dry brush. The arms are spindly. They look ridiculous. They're like t- eight foot tall in comparison to the fifth doctor. They're, they're identical. Then we're paying 30 pounds and everyone's saying, oh, isn't that a bargain? Isn't that great? Isn't that this? Isn't that that? It's not a bargain. That's ten pound for an unpainted bit of plastic in the sh- in the rough shape of a Silurian, and at that, not even the one anyone wants. It's from the story that everyone doesn't really care about. What do you think, Wade and Alex? Okay, so for me, this set, uh, I think it's an unusual choice. Like, I'll be frank, it's really unusual. I'm not sure why they've decided to go for this Silurian design, let alone even having Silurians be the choice for the online exclusive. I Personally, you know, it, it's weird. Like, if you compare this set to the previous two online exclusives, those being the Jungles of the Mechanus and the Abominable Snowmen, both of those two sets gave us things that Doctor Who collectors have been wanting for ages. That being movie Daleks and the second Doctor in his iconic fur coat. Whereas this, 
I don't think any of us really were asking for this, which I think is where character of lost it a little. Also, I'm I, like I'll stop being the over dramatic now. This set in quality doesn't really match up with the past two exclusives. Like the first Daleks, they had the new ear lights and the paint was so crisp. They had that nice metallic blue. They had the lighter glossy blue. They had the sort of silvery, you know, all the paintwork was lovely on it. Then you had the TARDIS and fifth do- uh, and the uh, second Doctor. You had electronics. You had a brand new sculpt that we thought we'd never get with the... um second doctor then we had a new uh roof was it a new roof? it was wasn't it or was it reused no, it's doors uh, the roof was oh yeah old sorry and reused we got new doors and and the paintwork on the tardis was amazing and then you fast forward to this set it looks like it's been made by a different company it looks so cheap in comparison to the past two exclusives yeah for me i think I'm somewhat reserving my judgment till I get this in hand in terms of the way the plastic looks because we know that by now these promotional shots they never do these figures any justice they always make them look really bright and saturated and yeah pretty nasty and yeah and on the pictures yeah the plastic looks cheap and really nasty and I, you know the color doesn't even look right to the actual Salarians in the story but yeah i i'm reserving my judgment on that until i get them in hand because if you look at some of the reviews that are out at the moment they do seem a bit better i mean not perfect but certainly better than they do in the promo shots so yeah i think the main issue for me with these silurian figures is the arms i just i cannot get behind the arm sculpts on these because what has happened here is they've reused the upper arms of the sea devil figure so then the lower arms have been made to accommodate to fit those but the problem is is the sea devil arms are too skinny and don't feature the scaling effect that is on these silurians same goes for the legs, but I don't mind them quite as much because I understand there needs to be at least some reuse somewhere to make these, you know, viable. Um, but the arms really annoy me. They are pretty skinny um, and there's no way of redeeming that compared to, you know, things like the paint and things like that that, you know, I could fix if I really think it's bad. Um, so that's my main gripe with the set. Um, but I think the sculpts that they have done and that are new are really good. I think the torso sculpt's good. The head sculpt, I think it looks fantastic. Looks exactly like how the Solarians were in that story. So it's really good. Details all nicely captured. But yeah, and then I think the packaging is a bit too big. <laughs> like, it seems a little excessive, almost, really, for what is in it. But I understand there's the 3D bit of the backdrop and stuff, but yeah. Who is doing the posing? for these sets they look like they've just been chucked in at random they don't even know they look like they don't know what they're doing in the box exactly that's my other thing i was going to say is they the the posing of them i wouldn't mind if they sort of made to look like they were moving some controls or something like that but they all just are different angles and are all static in the in their pose it looks really unusual their poses this look exactly how i was walking around my room trying to understand what was the point of this set yeah um this is the first and i can legitimately say this this is the first doctor who set that's come out in quite a long time where i look at it and i i like it overall i do like it but i don't love it i'm not as concerned with the reuse of sea devil parts or that the arms are skinny yes it does look a little bit weird but i'm a little more I guess forgiving than you guys, but I uh, I also recognize where you guys are coming from as well. Wait, wait, what did you think of the Black Chrysanthemum Black Series figure that was just announced? Oh, geez, that uh, that's a worse atrocity no, than this thing. It's the same <laughs> by thing by far. It's the same thing. It's got <laughs> they just painted Chewbacca black. All these, all these people have done is paint a sea devil orange with a new. They tent. gave this thing new parts. The bias towards <laughs> Doctor Who is incredible. If any other company was doing this, they'd be laughed at and ridiculed. But because it's Doctor Who and character options, everyone gives them a free pass. I'm not giving them a free pass. I'll tell you why I am. I don't like this set. Mainly because it's a Warriors of the Deep set. But why do we not have a Sea Devil? Exactly. Yes. You could have had Silurians, two Silurians in it, and then a Sea Devil. 
That thing would have been incredible. No, but wait, there's three of everything. <laughs> three of everything. Imagine that sea devil as a figure. Like, and I'm I'm hoping Al would be able to make that sea devil a reality soon, but I am a little disappointed in the fact that they didn't try to attempt to give us a sea devil or a, something else just to add uh I guess a flair to it because we're really just getting three of the same figure. And that's what I think is a little weird. For the price, uh, I'm not mad at the price per se, but my mar- argument is had they bumped up the price to I don't know, maybe 34.99 or maybe even 39.99 and that gave us a chance to get that sea devil, I would have paid it. Absolutely. And I already have an idea in mind how they could do it. They could definitely do it with a new Sea uh, Devil head sculpt with the helmet and everything, or and maybe even modify the old one. Maybe they could figure out how, a way to uh, cut off the side fins and then put a helmet on. They could get creative. I don't know, but I'm I'm just going to assume they'll make a new head sculpt. I've got a general idea of a recipe they could use for kit bashing some parts with the arms or legs or whatnot. But really, all they need for it, the whole entire thing is wrapped in a cloak of armor. That could be done with a long PVC skirt wrap, I think. I think you could be able to achieve some great effects by just wrapping PVC parts around the body and then maybe parts of the legs or whatnot. I th- I feel like had they increased the price a little bit and increased their budget, they could have given us a Sea Devil in this set, and that would have made it more valuable. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with what Wade said. I mean, the Sea Devil design in that story, I think, is brilliant. And I would have much preferred... Like, if you gave me an option of having a set of three of those Sea Devils, or these three Solarians we've got, I would have gone for the Sea Devils, because the design is so cool. I love that samurai-style look. Same. I would have gone for the Sea Devils. It's really cool. Probably one of the very few good things really you know to come from that story really but like well, you've the... not even seen it how can you roast it you've not even watched it well people tell me things we've got fish samurai that's a story that's good but we're also getting a, a a sea devil story in like a few months so why wouldn't have this been the perfect opportunity yeah would have been topically relevant to do it yeah that was my thinking as well like it's the 50th anniversary of sea devils we could have gotten one. <laughs> Why not commemorate the Sea Devils in their year? And hopefully maybe Al will make a Sea Devil for Series 13. I, I doubt it, but I would love to see it. But yeah, that's that's my ultimate reason for not loving this set. I would have loved to have seen at least one Sea Devil. Had that happened... Or why not do a four pack for goodness sake? The packaging is big enough. They could just do two Silurians and then two Sea Devils. I would have paid 40 pounds for four figures like that, especially of that quality. Yeah, that would have been so much cooler. I mean, yeah, I think this is the issue really in general is this set's lack of variety. I think that's what is rubbing people the wrong way. It it just I think if this was like a single carded figure and they maybe charged like 10, 15 pounds each. For one, people might have not had this issue. I mean, um, I personally think the value for money in this set is absolutely there. I'm not in that particular argument, um, because ultimately, if you think about like a Hasbro figure, for example, you're paying twenty pounds for one figure, but here you're paying ten pounds more, and you're getting three figures. You know, even if they are all the same, but there's enough new parts to justify it. Um, but yeah, I do think having three of them is a little monotonous and it essentially forces people to buy multiples they don't want. Um, And I think the reason this is, at least thinking from budget perspective, this means there is basically, there are 1,500 Silurian figures that have been produced, you know, being put into these packs. No, it's not that there's 1,500, there's 15,000. Damn. (laughs) It's 5,000 times three, so... That's and kind of like what you said too. They almost could have made this a single carded figure and just produced that many, but it makes you wonder did they have I'm thinking they maybe not were as confident in a Silurian from this story especially selling 15,000 units. But when you include 3 of them in one package, you're basically 
saving costs in that sense or distribution wise or whatnot or even just selling them single carded online 15,000 units is a way bigger number than 5,000 units exactly so yeah i mean yeah 15,000 units would you know that's going back to like mainstream retail action figure days basically in terms of the amount of units that you'd need to sell to make a profit and that's what this figure is basically with the amount of new parts it has so I think character have been clever here and they've basically gone, well, we're not going to sell that many because like if these were single card, I'd only buy one personally. I don't know about you guys. I'd just buy the one and I'd be happy. So I think what they've done is they've gone, we can shift the amount that we need to shift to make this profitable if we present them in a three pack and have it limited to 5,000, you know, and it works out. So they've been sneaky and they've been clever. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I understand it's they're still a business at the end of the day. They need to make profit. And I also realize I'm pretty sure we're going to get the 70s Silurian uh for the B&M range. So that'll just double their profit in as well. I don't have a problem with that. Kudos to them that they were able to do this. But yet again, it goes back to the Sea Devil. Had they included a Sea Devil in just this set. They don't even I don't think we'll ever see that Sea Devil in B&M. Maybe we'll see a Sea Devil in a, th- a three pack like this for character online in a year or two. I would I would certainly love to. Uh, or, that was the real uh, heartbreaker for me, so to speak, was the fact that we have this story. Those are the only two things this story is regarded for: the Silurians and the Sea Devils. And all you get is one half of the storyline. And it just doesn't feel complete and it doesn't feel right. I think the figures themselves I'm overall fine with. I just really think they just need like a dark brown or black paint wash all over the whole thing. That way we can see their fine details and make them a little bit darker as opposed to these bright colors they got going on. But yeah, I mean, going back to the 70s Silurian though. I think that is another part of this strategy is I think they've released the Silurian design that people want less as being the first one to come out. So people buy it as the exclusive. So then you release the more popular variant later and then people will buy that. So, yeah, I think there is, you know, ultimately just having three in the set is not really a creative choice of the, oh, there's three in the story. It's more, we need to make a profit from this and we need to make sure that people, you know, by future variants and things. Um, I'm not trying to, I'm not hating on character for doing that. I'm just pointing that out as what is happening. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with that either. I understand business. Because, yeah, they're a business. They need to make money, and this is the way they do that. And people can like that, people can not like that. And, you know, I'm in the middle. I don't mind it. They can, you know, this is how the toy industry works. It's just, it's how it goes. Could they not use this same logic then to make? like new who stuff like i said the other day they could do three um oxygen space suits they could do the 12th doctor with a new head because he needs a, a proper head because the past two it. have either looked yeah. like a depressed old man or a teenager with gray hair but um then you could do bill pots on the river body and then a space zombie where you could do the blue guy and yeah, then, yeah you could do, I'd do that you could do three colony mondasians or, you know, if they really wanted to be clever with it, like used to are saying with what they've done with the um, release, the variant nobody really cares about and then use the money you've made from this to release ones they do care about. Couldn't, couldn't they use the same thing to do like a, uh, an, a nightmare in silver Cyberman and a cyber warrior being they share a lot of the same body? Yeah, I think so. And yeah, this is something I'm going to say is that while this particular Silurian set is not like the ideal set where you think, oh, having three of them and you know, making it a set is, like, the most popular choice. The precedent it sets is a good idea, though. I actually like this formula. I li- yeah, exactly. I like this format. I could certainly see this in the future working really well for, say, if you had a set of three Nightmare and Silver Cybermen in a set. Because I'd happily do that if that meant that those figures would be profitable. And to be fair, I would have bought three anyway of that kind of figure. Oh, jeez, I'd buy more than three. You know, yeah, exactly. You could. I think people would only build them more than this. So I think character missed a, a thing there. And they could produce more units, too. I think three packs would be fine. And I think two packs would be passable. And I think, you know, would work out somewhat better. And yeah, I think single packs, as much as I'd like them, I don't think they're viable in terms of making money. 
Not yet, at least. Not yet. <laughs> RTD2, boys. <laughs> and for everyone listening, of course we're going to sound like a bunch of haters on the air, but for goodness sakes, we're the fools. We, you, Well, you guys, I know, both bought this, right? <laughs> We've all bought this set. <laughs> I'll see if I can order one. Um, for all you international customers outside of the UK, Character Online is fantastic with their shipping services. And they even lower the price um to account for other nations currencies which kudos to them i couldn't be more happy that they have their customers in mind and that they care and provide for them they go above and beyond and i have never had a problem with them to date character online is phenomenal to their international uh, customer base Uh, like i said before we might sound like a bunch of haters but Really, we did buy this set, um, except for me. I- I'm going to see if I can. Uh, I'm having my own financial problems. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, as much as we gripe or harp down about this set, there is a lot that we, and I'm sure it's safe to say, there is quite a bit that all three of us admire at the end of the day when it comes to these Doctor Who products. And it's nice to know that even though it's less than ideal, we are still getting Doctor Who toys, and especially of 80s Silurians. I mean, I've had the Daypal one for years, and I thought that would be the only one we'd ever get. The Daypal one is actually really nice, and it has thicker arms. (laughs) It's got a great sculpt and dark paint apps. (laughs) Uh, Little did I know that we would be able to get this from character options. Yeah, I'm just really grateful to see characters like this being released. You know, who'd think that we'd get an 80s Silurian? I think that's, it's niche, but it's it's really good that we're getting it, even if it's not everyone's first choice or favorite choice. And it's actually good to see that classic Doctor Who still has this amount of life in it, even if it means that New Who is lacking as a result. It is, you know, it's good to see the Doctor Who line thrive like this. Um, and I really hope, as much as we do have issues with this set, that this set sells really well, because I think the formula this set is providing is really good and i desperately want to see more things like this in the future so you know i really hope that this is this really successful as much as the previous online exclusives were and that is where the whole warriors from the deep thing comes from because i'm a little worried that they have you know somewhat jumped the shark in terms of going for a very very popular choice that would sell you know faster um and show an extra amount of popularity but you know at the end of the day i think the set will sell out and it's gonna you know make character a lot of money and they'll be dead happy and we'll get more wonderful online exclusives in the future and and i look forward to that the um on my instagram story i put up like polls like you're gonna buy this set and what are your opinions on this set things like that and from the feedback that i've got the feedback compared to say the bonneville snowman set the bonneville snowman set everybody loved it everyone thought it was great but this set, there are people who are going, I'm not going to buy this, or I think it's okay, but I'm not going to buy it, or I like it, but I, these are not the characters I want, or, you know, things like that. There are, you know, people who choose not to buy this or don't like it for whatever reason, you know, they like other things the character make. So therefore, if they don't like this particular set, it does not mean that they're a hater or they are somehow destroying the product line they're putting or the brand being under the threat. problem. You know, exactly, that's it. It's like, they're not, you know, because they'll buy, say, the Bonneville Snowman set because they like it, you know, more. And I think there are people who have genuine criticisms about this set. And to ignore those, I think, is, you know, is worrying, really. And it's it's like a, a form of, like, mass psychosis that people are so, like... Yeah, it, 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 I, it's like people are, like, petrified... I think bad's going to happen just because a few people slagging off a Silurian set simultaneously isn't going to put the brand under threat. But it is worrying to see the weird controversy that has sparked about from this set. I'd, I've i never seen this happen with any other Doctor Who sets or even the online exclusives like this. This is a weird trend that sparked about from this set where it's just creating two polar opposites and opinions and you can't say anything bad about character options or you can't even critique this set by the forced positivity and how you are unable to criticize it in any way. We're not criticizing it. We're still going to buy these dang things. But we really are critiquing and doing an analysis about what is odd with it and what 
are some decisions that could have made this thing better than what it actually is. That's all what we are doing at the end of the day. That's what we do at this podcast. <laughs> I mean, this is it. I mean, people can have opinions. People are allowed to have negative opinions on this set if they want to. We can't stop people from being negative, can we? As much as I'm personally not, it's like, I'm not going to tell people that they're like bad for not liking this set. Well, I mean, just to add to what you're saying, us three, we're absolutely in the minority of this. We're, we're the only ones who are on the fence, but we're just barely positive. We're, we're on the fence about this set, and we have our reasons why. But this whole forced positivity thing that sparked from this set alone, where people are overly defensive for character options, and sometimes they just miss the mark. They're humans like everyone else. They're imperfect. They make mistakes. This thing has a little bit more red flags to it than um, green flags. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, you know, a thing that is interesting. Like the, I mean, I personally, you know, defend this stuff, but I think people, a lot of the collectors at the moment, I think they still have this level of paranoia about how the figure line almost ended in 2017-18, where they almost feel like they have an obligation to the figure line because they don't want to see it go down that path again. And you know what? I I think we're guilty of that too, to an extent. And yeah, I think it's less about the show not being as big of a brand anymore, even though I do think it has shrunk to an extent uh, compared to, say, you know, 2010 or 2006. You know, it, it's definitely smaller than it was then. But I think it's more about the toy industry changing more than Doctor Who changing. Because if you look at even other toy brands, they reuse lots of parts all the time. And the cost of manufacturing is far greater than it was in 2010. You know, it, it's that those are the things that contribute more than the show. And let's keep in mind, people, we had the Earthshock set come out how many months ago? And people exactly. complained about that. And they just ranted all over about how character options is ruining the brand by making this stupid worthless set and yeah fair enough it's a terrible set but <laughs> but this whole forced positivity thing just makes me think of happiness patrol at the end of the day that's what the internet has turned it into happy 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 you you cannot cry you cannot <laughs> be upset or mad <laughs> otherwise you'll get executed <laughs> but yeah this whole controversy thing that sparked from this set that's ultimately why we titled this episode the way we did warriors of the deep because frankly we don't know what's going to come about from it or how it's going to affect future sets and how fans and collectors discuss their opinions amongst themselves online it just feels weird having this forced positivity perspective and also one thing i like to say is that if you love this set and are really positive about it we're not saying you're fake about it or are trying to defend the company necessarily us personally we're still a little bit on the fence about it if you really like this set good for you if you love it i'm happy for you you got your warriors of the deep set that's incredible but it's become the point where we can't critique anything anymore because it's automatically assumed as criticism oh you say one negative thing about it you are a hater you do nothing but criticize these toy companies and the products they make Really, we're critiquing it at the end of the day. We want to see this brand at the best it's ever been, despite past circumstances, and we'll tell you how they could have done it. We could, kind of like what we said earlier, by making new sculpts for the arms, um, by adding a black wash or a dark brown paint wash all over the whole body. Tweaks like that, or for me, including a sea devil, things like that would have made this set go from great or good, to absolutely brilliant, to pushing that mark that character options, and especially character online, is known for at this point. We got something that was good, but we could have gotten something that was fantastic. And that's ultimately why we're sharing our thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. All and once on we it. see it in hand, I'm. we already know it's going to look better in hand than it does on these online photos. <laughs> yeah, what a what a weird time to be a Doctor Who fan in 2022. <laughs> yeah. It's like there's been su such great stuff, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> what would you guys rate this set at? Taking all bias out of it, 
thinking about what we've gotten beforehand, what we're getting currently, or what's rumored. I, I don't even know what's rumored at this point, but like, uh oh, I guess I do know some things. But keeping stuff like that in mind from past history of Doctor Who figures we've gotten, and then this set in particular, what would you rate this thing at? Would you say this is really poor quality? Would you say it's bad? It's good but needs tweaking? Is it great the way it is? Or is it, are you of those that say this is fantastic and brilliant? I wouldn't change a single thing. I would say purely because of how many new parts are in this, the thought that's gone into the packaging, I'd, I'd give it a halfway point. I'm not going to say it's rubbish and I'm not going to say it's amazing. I'd say probably five out of ten. There's cl clear fault gone into it, but it's just been executed poorly, in my opinion. Okay, that's a pretty fair analysis. What about you, Alex? Yeah, I'd say I feel pretty much the same. I mean, for me, like, taking the way that there's three of the same figure and all that aside, and also putting aside any idea of what we could have had instead of this type thing, let's look at this for what it is more than what it could have been. Um, you know, um so on that objective level of, you know, how good the Silurian figure is, on an individual level, I'd say I'd probably give it like, a, at the moment, six or seven out of ten. Um, because I've, it's a shame, really, that we're at a point where a lot of action figures are not, like, painted anymore, just cast in the plastic. So on a quality level, it's not as high as it could have been. But that's not to say it's bad. Because as I say, I, th I think the head sculpts on these guys look absolutely fantastic. There's a lot to love here, even, you know, despite all the other things. Um, so, yeah, I'd say at the moment, in terms of the the situation, the release and everything, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit on positive end. I'm like six out of ten for me. Because there's a lot to love here, even, you know, despite criticisms that we have about it. And then my thing for being worried about this set goes back to the dang sea devil that was what i was looking forward to the most and it, i'm i'm very much bummed that we didn't get a sea devil figure but all i can do at this point is hope that al will make a part two to this set and that we will get three sea devils because as soon as he does that i know i'm buying like five or ten of these well thank you guys for doing this episode with me and talking about the latest doctor who toys and last but not least i'd like to thank you the audience members for listening to our podcast if you enjoyed it be sure to share it with your friends, and also be sure to leave a like and subscribe. For 2022, we've got huge plans such as a Patreon or exclusive content like custom figures tutorials, kit bashing guides, and painting tutorials. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel as well, as we'll be uploading high quality figure reviews and even more toy content, so throw us a bone. And the goal of this podcast series is to cover the history of all Doctor Who figures and toys, so be sure to stay tuned for more. I'm your host, Wade. And this is the Parliament of the Daleks. Their poses dis look exactly how I was walking around my room trying to understand what was the point of this set. It's the three stages of denial or grief, whatever the bloody phrase is. <laughs> Yeah, but you um, bloody talked me into buying it. I wasn't going to, and then you no, said... Oh, you know full well why you wanted to buy it, Jack. So don't point the finger yeah. at me. <laughs>